hundreds of toys that they bust down and distributed last night. You're right, Jenny. That, that all those toys filled up one big bus. All right, Louisville starting lineup now. We told you that Malik Williams is out. Jalen Withers will get the start. We told you about Sharp, but Davian McKnight is the heart and soul of Western Kentucky. He makes them run. Kentucky 7-4 and four and coming off a really big win, a 23-point win over Ole Miss. No surprise, Sharp wins the tip. What kind of tempo? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Both these teams want to push it up, but this Louisville team defensively, they been both teams are great defensively, but different. Louisville played man-to-man 99% -man of the time. They will try to pack it in the lane. Luke Frampton. He's their best three-point shooter. They got to get out. Dre Davis looked like he slept on that a little bit. And now you see Western Kentucky. They've been lying lately on this 2-3 zone. It's a great move because it keeps Sharp in the middle of the lane so he can do that. Nation's leading shot blocker. That's number 55 already. You want to have a defense where he's close to the basket. If you play man-to-man, -man, they'll put him in pick and rolls all day. Now he just stands under the basket and doesn't go anywhere, and he is a force inside defensively. That's McKnight, the lefty, Justice. This place is rocking already. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, neither one of the, well, Louisville in particular, has not shot the ball well this year. But they've got to get out on Frampton and Justice because those two guys are the two best shooters for Western Kentucky. From a perimeter standpoint, they are the main guys that got to be guarded. A pair of threes and a 6 nothing start. I mean, Louisville's been holding people to 29% for a three-point line. One of the top 15 three-point defenses in the country. They get burnt twice in a row. Sharp with the screen. McKnight got by him and lost the ball. It's a turnover. He's a really good player. He averages four turnovers a game. That's the part of his game that he's got to solidify. Got to get that down to two turnovers a game. Louisville loses a double-double with Malik Williams. 11 points and 10 rebounds a game. And a big part of their offense. And that's why they're going to have to do it a different way. That's where you got to get the ball against that zone, that foul. They got lucky on that one. But you got to get the ball to the foul line area against a 2-3 zone. Try and make that big guy at least come up that far. That was Trey Davis. It's not often that an altered shot goes in. But that shot was altered, and it went in. Another three. This time Hamilton to miss. Justice. Tough shot. And one of the things that Louisville does great, they're one of the better defensive rebounding teams in the country, do a terrific job of putting the body on people and boxing out. Long three. And an offense, uh, defensive rebound for McKnight. That's one of the other things. McKnight averages almost seven rebounds a game, and he's their point guard. Matt Cross, new to the starting lineup a few games ago with a rebound. And Louisville turns it over. And that's been the tough thing for both these teams. They both average over 14 turnovers a game. You see Louisville trying to push the tempo. One of the ways to beat a zone defense is to beat it down the floor. Chris Mack was telling us he wanted to do that. That's why you see them trying to push this, this pace a little bit. Louisville's profile, high-level defense, struggling offense. A solid rebounding team, and the turnover's an issue. Yeah, but when you're shooting 38, when you're shooting 29 from three and 42 from the field, you got to pick that up on the offensive end a little bit. Motion is the trademark of a Rick Stansbury offense. Hamilton. Could have called a foul there. Samuel Williamson for Louisville with the rebound. Sweeping left-handed hook. Yeah, but you know what? Sharp again caused that miss. He didn't block that, but he caused that. Hamilton way off. And it goes to Louisville. You know, right now, after watching these first three minutes and nine seconds, Sharp affects a game in a big, <laughs> it's going to sound stupid, big, big way. And he wasn't in the starting rotation to start the season. Once they put him in, it, it feels like everything changed for Western Kentucky. Yeah, and he's been averaging 10 points, 9 rebounds, and almost 6 blocks, and he's getting better offensively every game. He's Ralph Sampson-like, great hands, great feet, and he moves incredibly well. West is wide open, and that's important for Louisville. And that was exactly what they're going to need.
need to do in this game. Get it to the foul line, kick it out, and make a shot. Now, one thing you got to understand about Western Kentucky, they're one of the top ten teams in the nation in terms of how many threes people take against them. You don't get layups against them because of the big guy. You end up shooting a lot of threes, and they play zone also. Cross, quick trigger. Well, McKnight has the rebound. He's a good rebounding guard. He does everything well, this Davion McKnight. Hamilton in the paint. And to the line. You get to the foul line, you kick it out to the wing, the zone can't react fast enough, you get an open shot. West has been a 40% three-point shooter in his career, so he is a capable shooter as well as a tremendous point guard. And history tells you that, that Noah Locke and Jared West are going to shoot well from distance. They're just not doing it right now. Yeah, I mean, Locke especially, to be shooting 31%. He's a 40... He played three years at Florida and shot 40% from the three-point line. I mean, this kid is a career... One of the best shooters he was in the SEC. And West at Marshall, last year 41% himself. Sidney Curry into the ball game for Louisville. Mason Faulkner in the game. Chris Mack has gone to his bench. And Faulkner's a kid who averaged... 17 points a game in Western Carolina. Another guy who's capable of putting the ball in the basket. Inside out, got a clean three, cross missed it. But if you're noticing, they're taking a lot of three-point shots, and they're not a good three-point shooting team. Keep an eye on that. Justice! And you see, the more that Louisville has to set up like this, the more sharp becomes a factor in the game. West, sharp patrolling the paint in that zone. Williamson got him in the air and got by him, but missed the shot. Whoa. I'll tell you one thing, he doesn't have to jump for a shot fake. He's going to be able to do a lot of damage just stand there with his arms up. He's still raw, but man, has he improved light years from last year. Yeah, these guys have got to get a lot stronger. He was open on a rim run. Corner three. Got it! Wow! That's Hamilton! I mean, they are torching one of the better three-point defenses in the country right now. Faulkner, head fake. Not many holes in this zone. Nice high low. And a foul on the rebound. Sidney Curry. What a start for Western Kentucky. Well, they've been a little up and down from the pool who, when they found we were from out of town, not only thanked us for coming to, to call this game, but also just remarking about all the, the money and all the support from all over the country they've received. You know, one thing about this country in general, the whole country, comes together when it needs to come together and this is what happened here with these people and they're feeling the love they're getting from all over the country. Jared West misses a three. Williamson with a putback. And on the offensive glass where Louisville has an advantage. And really that's the big weakness of the 2-3 zone. You must crash the offensive glass. Especially a team like Louisville, that's a good rebounding team. They got to get on the glass hard against a team that doesn't know where to box you out. Jarius Hamilton going hard to the bucket. This guy was a five playing the center role at Maryland last year, and Rick Stansbury has set him free. He's no longer back to the basket guy. No, he's a much more versatile player than that. At Maryland, the only average six, seven points a game. Oh, that's just took his eye off it. Justice ahead. Oh, he got it in. And he's fouled. I mean, this is just, he completely took his eyes off the ball. I don't know if he was looking to see where he was going to pass it or he was surprised to get it. But that was, if that's not an unforced turnover, then we don't have unforced turnovers. This is a really tough road environment, and it's something that Louisville was well aware of. Chris Mack told us yesterday he likes playing in 
in places like this. He's already been to Michigan State. They played a road game and won at NC State. But on this emotional Saturday here, this is a really, really a tough place and environment for Louisville. And let's say this about Louisville. They're playing without their best player. And he's so important because they're a paint scoring team. And that's where, that's what he does. But paint against the zone becomes very, very tough to come by. Even if he was here, it would be a lot harder today in that paint. Malik Williams out. He, he, he intimidates every shot. He's getting a hand up because his arms are so long. Hamilton driving. <laughs> I don't know that any other player in this game could have made that catch. Hands and feet. Even if he can't run, okay. As long as he can move inside that lane and he can catch, we got some. This kid can run the floor, too. Thirteen point lead. A lot of potential in this kid. Ellis pulls a three, hits a three. L. Ellis, the transfer from Tallahassee Community College. The junior college All-American the last two seasons. And he's a lot of offense, this kid. I mean, he came off, he's 21 points off the bench against Michigan State at Michigan State. This kid can score. McKnight already has four assists. Sharp, the miss. See, that's he's got to go stronger on that one. Jalen Withers in the ball game. Bench much deeper for Louisville than and, for Western Kentucky. And they went man to man. This is a surprise. I, I would like to see deep three. Faulkner. I was going to say, now's the time to get him in a ball screen and bring him out to the top of the key or the three-point line so you can move around a little bit. I was surprised to see Western Kentucky go man to man there. It's a big day for Mason Faulkner. He started his career here at Western Kentucky. He's from these parts, and he hits a big three off the bench. I'm going to tell you, they're going to be zone next possession. Justice around the screen. In the lane, a floater. No. Put back. Hamilton is fouled. In-state rivalry, Louisville has come to Bowling Green in Western Kentucky. They're part of our people. They may come from all over, uh, but they are here supporting us every step of the way. We appreciate them and to everybody out there that has done even the smallest thing. We can feel that and we're grateful. Thank you so much, Governor. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jenny. Well done. Of course, we will see Kentucky coming up here. John Calipari also uh, in on the effort. We'll take on North Carolina. That's later on the... CBS Sports Classic coming your way from Las Vegas. Here, Western Kentucky is off to a quick start and a nine-point lead over Louisville. And here they went back to that zone. You know, coaches are funny. You change defense, you give up basket. Even though it was a three-point shot, you say, you know what, I'm going back to the zone. I like the way that looked better. I have to agree. And Sharp is on the bench for the first time. Isaiah Cozart is in the game in Louisville. And more than half of Louisville's shots tonight have been three. Now, normally, that's not good, but they've been doing a pretty good job here trying to, you know, get some pretty good looks against that zone. Justice! Oh. Five of six from distance. Noah lock back in. This is Ellis launching a three. Comes up short. Justice has the rebound. Luke Frampton. Cozart with a screen. McKnight. Skip pass. Corner. Justice. Goodness. In a game at IUPUI. Locke rolls in a three. Much needed for Louisville. Noah Locke, the transfer from Florida. Look at this. Six of seven is Western Kentucky. Justice drawing a little more attention. Anderson floats one up. Williams to the rebound for Louisville. This is where Louisville usually makes their money, and that's in transition. And you know, now with Sharp out of the game, they go man to man. Not a bad thing to try. Louisville's letting them go. Faulkner 
That's his second three, and Louisville's starting to get some rhythm. Yeah, Kaylee did this game 28% from the three-point line. Down to six. Western Kentucky is without Jalen Butts, one of their reserves, and what is already a thin bench. That's a walk and a turnover. Watch the premiere of CBS's new family medical drama, Good Sam, starring Sophia Bush and Jason Isaacs. Good Sam, Wednesday, January 5th, on CBS. With Stansbury and the Hilltoppers. So, a short bench. Butts is a guy that plays uh, valuable minutes. Faulkner thought about a three. Withers inside. Good rotation. Lock. Yes! Here come the Cardinals. And we talked about Locke in the open that with Malik Williams out, they would need to step up from the three-point line. Frampton to the bucket. Louisville starting to dominate a bit on the boards. Here's the transition. Ellis backing in. Got through and is fouled. Take a look at Cameron Justice. We used to tell our players, here he is. The more screens you set, the more shots you get. He sets a great back screen. They forget him for a second because the screener is the forgotten man. That's all the room that he needs to be able to make that shot. You set screens, you get shots. Guess what? Kids will screen if you tell them that. If they believe you, you show them that, they will screen. Already with 15 points. For a guy who last year was a graduate assistant it's unbelievable on this staff. He had one more year of eligibility, decided to give it a go. And man, is he lighting it up. Sharp is back in the ball game, sucks up a rebound. This is as close as Louisville has been in a while. Down three, but Knight doubled out high. And you know, a lot of it happened when Sharp was out of the game. Anderson at three. He was out of the game much more comfortable offensively. Even though they were making threes, they just were much more comfortable. 14 threes have gone down. Locke misses. Anderson, the offside rebound. They've got to not fall in love with that, though, because it's not their thing. Anderson goes down. He was bumped. Dre Davis with the foul. Well, they got a lot of guys getting into the act. Now it's Josh Anderson, the fifth-year coach last year. So... Rick Stansbury really leans on him out on the floor. <laughs> it's a pretty good guy to have, you know what I mean? Especially off the street, a guy who can really play and really shoot. Hey, one thing about this game nowadays, there's always a place for somebody who can make threes. That's it. That's the game. David McKnight with the ball already has seven assists in this ball game. Yeah, he's a really good leader out there. That's an open look. But a missed three. Uh, Jarius Hamilton. Yeah, the only thing McKnight's not good at is shooting threes. He's four for ten this year, but obviously only taking ten threes. He's not comfortable doing that. But he's a very, very good player in a lot of areas. Jamarian Sharp is back in for Western Kentucky. And he rebounded Hamilton of the Hilltoppers. This is a full house. This place holds almost 7,500. They probably could have sold a lot more tickets. You know, somebody said, okay, you know, Louisville's got 25 points. How many of those points would be in the paint? You say, oh, my God, at least 15. They got two points in the paint in this game. Two. Remember, they're without Malik Williams. And that's just too easy. Sharp again. And it leads back to eight. West. You know, inside out, searching for the three. Lock, stripped off of him. Luke Frampton. I mean, here's what happens. Okay, run it from there. You're going to stop it right there. Now when you get that penetration, all these guys are in trouble. What are they going to do? No man's land. Throw it up to the rim. That's why dribble penetration is the worst thing you can allow a team to do offensively. Now, one thing Chris Mack told us, that the zone was a concern. 
And one of the things that Louisville wanted to accomplish was beat the zone back down the floor. But, I mean, when when you're making shots, it's tough for the opponent to get out on the break. Well, they have no fast break points. They've got two points in the paint. Luckily for them, they're knocking out threes today, or it would really be a problem. The question is, can they do that for 40 minutes? They've been knocking out threes, and they're down eight. I know you watch a lot of tape. The early tape of Western Kentucky looked nothing like this. But their game against Old Miss, this is exactly who they were then. And the difference was Jamari and Sharp. Well, and the bulk of their games early, they played man-to-man -man because he was not playing that much. Ever since they put him out there, they've been using the zone a lot more, and it's made a huge difference. Scramble for the ball. And Jared West, the captain for Louisville, runs it down. Faulkner is in a couple threes. Sharp didn't yeah. leave his feet that time. Exactly. He's got to stay down. He should never, ever jump before someone else. Any mid-range jumper from the top of the lane is automatically altered. And Louisville has been long on those. Consistently. I, if I'm Chris Mack, the thing I'm most disappointed in is the way they played defensively. I mean, they were allowing 38%. To number, they were 22 in the nation defensive field goal percentage coming into this game, and they have not defended with urgency tonight. McKnight, shot caught down. And a foul. Not sure if it's three free throws or two. Dre Dick, great leader and the heartbeat of this team. Tuesday, January 5th, the longest pit stop in Amazing Race history is finally over. New teams are back racing around the world for a million dollars. Join hosts of Phil Kogan for the season premiere of the Amazing Race Wednesday, January 5th on CBS. Rich Waltz, Steve Lapis, Jenny Dell, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and a very emotional and loud crowd here. The devastation of the tornadoes last week. This is one of the hardest hit areas in the state of Kentucky. The community, the region, the state has rallied. And, uh, they're having a fun time right now watching this great rivalry. I'll tell you one thing, Rich, they're really missing Malik Williams. I mean, he's a very good player, but they really have had nothing in the lane. Cross. That's a nice look. Wheeler with the fine. Roosevelt Wheeler, the freshman, with the assist. You get the ball to the foul line area, and the thing you need to do when you play zone is you always have to look for cutters cutting from behind you. I remember watching Pete Carrill with the great Princeton coach. He played, he played one of the best one to two, two matchup zones ever. And I remember his players would constantly be turning their heads. Oh, another lob. <laughs> McKnight to Sharp. My point is, is, when you play zone and you're in that back line, you got to always be looking behind you for guys cutting. McKnight has eight assists already. A floater. Sharp cleans it up. And this guy's getting all these lobs, and really, the one thing that he does really good is pick and roll and run to the rim, be a rim runner. He hasn't even really done that in this game. The run has built the lead back to 11. Biggest lead in this half was 13. Here comes one now. McKnight driving. McKnight blocked from behind. Cross may have gotten it. I mean, you're going to see here. Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know why. How could Jared West be the only guy back there on a guy seven for five? He's 5'11". 12 field goals, 11 assists, eight of them for Davion McKnight, who is out really for the first time. Into the ball game, Sherman Brashear. Faulkner. Sharp has the rebound. Oh, Hamilton, and that's an offensive foul. I'd like to see that one. Western Kentucky. I'll work them out a little during halftime. So the rest of the team.
team went into the locker room. Jamarian stayed out, did some work after the game. Coach Stansberry said it was his dream. He told him it was his dream to be a Hilltopper, but he needed to work on his grades a little bit. So he went to junior college, grew to 7-2 there, and then grew to 7-5 when he got here to Western Kentucky. His dad, 6-9, mom, 6-3, guys. Wow. And Jenny, they've got him for two more years. They do, and right now he's at 230, the strength and conditioning coach and nutritionist. They're trying to get him up to 250, guys. All right, good stuff. Faulkner in the corner. Louisville out of the break, looking for a bucket. Cross drives, dumps it over Sharp, and out of bounds. It's a turnover. Yeah, I mean, this kid gets 20 pounds on him. Then he'll be able to establish a position in the low post. He doesn't really score right now with his with somebody leaning on him with his back to the basket. It's all these rim runs and lobs and things like that. So if he can develop a little bit of a post game by getting stronger, that's going to make a huge difference. So somewhat reminiscent of Taco Fall, who kind of came out of nowhere and had to develop. And I think this kid runs better. Yes, and hands and feet better. Yeah. Falls. More lively, more lively legs. The Cavaliers now is Taco Fall after a, a run with the Celtics. Justice, tough catch, tough distance, no problem. I'll tell you one thing, if I'm Chris Mack at halftime, I am lighting into these guys about their defensive effort. It is not up to what it's been all year. Cross answers. Justice has 18. Cross drills that one. His first three. He's got five in the game. 18 of their 29 field goal attempts have been from three-point line. Crampton thought he had a baseline cut. And it's a turnover. An 11-point lead with 2.22 left in this first half. The thing that hurts about that is, just to tell you about what Sharp is doing, Louisville is 3 for 11 from inside the arc. They've got 3 out of 11 from inside the arc. That's the effect that he has. Now they're man to man. I would try to get him outside. They have not tried to put him in a pick and roll when they've gone man to man. That's one of the reasons they play mostly zone, but he's man here. Ellis, man, is that altered. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, I, I think that if you when they go man to man, the first thing you have to do is get his man to come out and set a high screen. He leads the nation in block shots. He has to lead the nation in altered shots. I mean, I've seen five or six already in this game. Justice. Oh, he opened again. I'll tell you one thing. If you're going to hedge a pick and roll with him, you better get back quick. Because he can move those feet and get down that lane very well. Better be a tall hedge. Yeah, a tall hedge and a quick one. And when you get back quick, you got to body him because you're obviously he's too big. Cross turns, faces, and hits. Nice soft touch from Matt Cross, the transfer from the University of Miami in Florida. He had a big game last year against Louisville as a hurricane and then transferred in this year. Again, if you're just joining us, Malik Williams, the best player for Louisville this year, is out. COVID protocol, ball on the floor. Cross wins the battle. Louisville has numbers. And finished by West. And Jared West, the third highest in steals of active players in the country. You saw why there. He caused that turnover on that last possession. He is one of the best defensive guards in the ACC. And he has had McKnight as his assignment. McKnight's got eight assists. And a couple turnovers. Hamilton. Why not? I mean, 46 points. 9 of 11 from distance. 56% from the field. Corner three. Answered there. L. Ellis. Final seconds, first half. What a wild one. From Jenny for sure. And Coach, the, the other thing for Chris Mack, he can't right now, if they're, Western Kentucky's making shots, he can't beat that zone back down the floor. No, no, what he's got to do is he's got to start playing defense first, and then the offense will come. But a little bit more urgency on the defense event will help them offensively to get out and transition, make a couple of steals. So right now, their defense has been very flat, and they're normally a tremendous defensive team. First touch is Western Kentucky's. Quick drive, Hamilton got it up and in. 
Janarius Hamilton, one of the most improved players in the country. The thing about him is he's a very tough cover because he can put the ball on the floor a little bit, and that, and he can make threes. So he's a tough guy, strong, tough to keep out of that lane. They went to that zone again. Cross kicks, lock. This is the three. And a rebounding foul on Trey Davis. That's a really good box out there. That's his third personal. You know, this is a little out of character. Now, they are playing without their best big man, Louisville, and Malik Williams, but a little out of character. They normally shoot about a third of their shots or threes. Now, in this game, they've been over half their shots are from the three-point line. Travian McKnight with the ball has had an exceptional game so far. Eight assists. Blows by McKnight. Fouled. That was a strong move, I'll tell you. I, I, I was shocked that he was able to get that to the rim as well as he did, taking a pretty good hit. The game plan for Chris Mack was don't let him go left. That's easier said than done. Tomorrow, it's time to celebrate the holidays with a CBS original movie. Christmas takes flight. Tomorrow, 8, 7 Central, on CBS. Happy holidays, Coach. Yeah, same to you, Rich. You know, that's why all of this that's happened down here, if you think about it, it's happening this time of year. Not any, no time of year would be good. But this time of year to be going through all this, too, is just an absolute shame. Of course, Louisville showed up yesterday with a busload of toys for the local kids. Withers, oh, oh, sharp for the block. I mean, he tried changing his shot, and he got his squad into the floor. Hamilton to McKnight. Frampton rises. <laughs> Biggest lead in this game is 14. Right now a 13-point lead for Western Kentucky. Lock. It's a soft touch. He's played better tonight. You know, that's a, that's a good sign for them because they need him to play the way he did when he was at Florida. He's had to make a few adjustments. He's got the ball in his hands a little more than he did at Florida. McKnight with a rare turnover. And West is right there to collect it. Foster a couple threes in that first half. Falling away. That's two sweet buckets, and both of them over Sharp. Yeah, it was a tough shot getting to dribble penetration into the lane that time. Norville has turned up the, the dial defensively. Noah Locke with his 13 points. Leads Louisville just to step back. Uh -uh. That's the toughest one that he took tonight. He didn't make it. Make him go off the dribble. All those ones he had in the first half were all off the catch. Make a guy like that put it on the floor. Cross, quick trigger. West thought about it. Proctor, good ball fake. Sharp's waiting. Oh, he got it up and over Mount Sharp. Yes, that was Sharp coming right at him, and he shot that thing 12 feet into the air. <laughs> that is a floater. A nice run here by Louisville, and a steal. This is Withers, Sharp, fouled him. Free throws coming. Sharp's first foul. Watch how high this thing goes up in the air. He sees him coming. <laughs> that, almost hit, that almost went up to the top of the backboard. That's a pretty good floater. You're talking 14, 15 feet. That thing was up there at that altitude. But you, you sense a, a, a different attitude with Louisville here in the second half. Yeah, I mean, they, they seem to have brought a little bit more of the defensive intensity now. This is a guy, Withers. All freshmen in the ACC last year averaged 10 and almost 8 rebounds a game, and he has really, he's averaging 3 points a game in his last five. He started earlier in the year. Chris Mack put him on the bench. This kid's got talent, but they got it. I thought maybe today he'd get going because no Malik Williams would open things up for him. Hasn't been real good so far. 7-0 run by Louisville. Within six. And a turnover. And all of a sudden, Western Kentucky 
starting to wobble. Well, you take a look at the defense that time. That time they pushed Western Kentucky out well beyond the three-point line, put a little more pressure on them. I mean, this team averages almost eight steals a game, Louisville, and they only had two in the first half. Locke feeling it. Justice. He's missed two threes now here in the second half. Ooh, almost over and back. Cross with a three. Louisville, the run continues. Well, they're starting to make Western Kentucky make some, take some tougher shots. I mean, look at the pressure now. There's another steal. Lock with the foul. Chris Mack enraged. A Mack cross to Trent. Now he's wide open there. Turnovers. Defensive intensity. That's always been a trademark of Chris Mack. Whether he was playing for uh, Pete Gillen at, at Xavier. And his great run at Xavier as a head coach. And there's McKnight. Tough shot there. Well, he's, he has a great, he might not be a good three-point shooter, but he has a great mid-range game. The run is snapped. Lock probing. Faulkner. Tough shot. It's a couple of bad ones in our last two possessions. Good night, full speed ahead. And a foul. Free throws when we get back. Louisville closer, down five. Jenny had a great story of how Rick Stansbury found him on the bench in a high school game as a junior. And he has improved by leaps and bounds just in this season. He wasn't in the starting rotation for the first few games. No, and, and let's face it, being 75 is definitely a, a weapon in the game of basketball. But long arms, long legs, can run the floor, good hands. That's one thing that he's really shown us. Get stronger, a lot of potential there. Rich Stansbury also has a transfer waiting for eligibility, and that's Keith Williams, a great player from Cincinnati. Pocket pass, and Wheeler with a two-hand flush. Yeah, that's a great point. Keith Williams was a great player for Cincinnati. Average 14 a game with Cincinnati. I mean, he can really play. They get him eligible. I don't know where they're going to play him. Uh, West is just an incredible defender for Louisville. He really is. Cross has it. West collects it. Louisville's defense has been really good in the second half. Noah Locke from the corner. Louisville within two now. That's what they've been waiting for from this kid. Now, he, he's had five games this year where he's made three threes, but he has been really inconsistent. 31% coming into the game from the three-point line. Different player today. 14-point lead. It's down to two. McKnight against West. It's a great battle. McKnight misses. Tips. Sharp. Not his game. And he misses the 12-footer. And we check in with Jenny Dell. Yeah, I was in the huddle with Coach Mack. He said that's the energy we need the rest of this game. His message was pick up, turn, put pressure on Western Kentucky without fouling. He said over and over again, the ball pressure is rattling them. And he finished the huddle by saying, man offense, man offense, man offense, guys. All right, good stuff, Jenny. There's no doubt that it's the, the defensive pressure has been turned up four notches for them in this game. Open Hamilton, and he misses the three. And the threes, which dropped... At a dizzying pace in the first half, not so much here for Western Kentucky. Strip there, Justice steps through, foul, and scores. Bad decision by Faulkner on the offensive end for Louisville, led to that turnover, and a nice finish by Justice right there. Made a bad decision going into the lane, a nice Euro step. And that was one of the things that... Uh, for the officials this year, they've decided spin moves, Euro steps, step backs, they're going to be a little bit more lean. I'm not saying that was a travel, but they're going to be a little bit more lean. And if they're not 100% sure when the guy picked up his foot, they're not calling travel. So a little more Euro friendly, is what you're saying. Yeah. Three point play at 21. 57. 52. 
Six minutes in. Cut off. Sharp just looming there in this zone in the paint. West rotates. Oh, he got that one. His third of the game. He's altered maybe five or six. At least. Ball pressure. That's a problem. McKnight. Bill Toppers take it back. McKnight is hurt. Slow to get up. You can see him in the 20, bent over. Lob, sharp the catch, and the finish. I mean, that was a really good catch and a soft touch off the glass. You can throw him past his blind. He's so big, just throw it up there somewhere. Louisville was within two. Right now, a seven-point lead. Look at this. And just throw it up as high as you can. You know, that dribble penetration is leading to a lot of those open looks. Because when they help and leave him, he's under, under there with West again. Williamson runs into Sharp. And the foul of reach. And I believe that's Josh Anderson. Actually, they're going to call it on McKnight, his first. 14-point lead for Western Kentucky. Wow. Louisville got within two. How about Western Kentucky? They've got four fouls on the whole game. They don't, they're number two in the nation. They only foul 12 times a game. People shoot seven free throws against them a game. That is unheard of. Louisville hasn't taken one free throw in this game yet. That's always been no, a, one for two. I'm sorry. They've that, taken two. That's always been a Rick Stansbury thing, too. Even at Mississippi State, they make more free throws than their opponents take. Justice runs it down. They were number one in the country last year, plus 74 over what their opponents took. They made. Hamilton's drive. Fouled by Ellis. His second. You know, Faulkner and Williamson made a couple of bad decisions on the last two possessions. They got to be careful. Trying to force something that wasn't there. You know, part of the puzzle for Chris Mack in Louisville is getting all these different players from different places pulling on the rope at the same time. And that's a coaches across the country are struggling with that. A lot of transfers in, but those parts don't necessarily fit your program. No, and you're right about that. It does take time to put it together, but it's not like the old days when I was coaching. You couldn't practice till October 15th. Now they're practicing all year round, these guys, a couple hours a week. So it is a difference. Jarius Hamilton, one of the transfers for Western Kentucky. A couple years at Boston College, last year at Maryland. And this is the front end of a one and one Ellis going to the bucket. Sharp is out of the ball game. Isaiah Cozart in for Western Kentucky. How's the time to go to the basket? Strong move. Anderson. That's how Louisville fell asleep. Wow! What a pass. The catch by Withers. Got it to Wheeler. And he flushes it home. That's a big bucket for one. Way too late when he's on the run. That's why Chris Mack called timeout there. He was upset at that transition defense as well he should be. You They're, get back into the game, and then all of a sudden you give an easy one like that. And you see the defensive number's not great. They are one of the, the better defensive efficiency teams in the country. Yeah, they came into this game number 12. Now, it's early, but they have played a half-decent schedule. You know, you got to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. But it's not as early. It's not like in November when you look at those things and say, hey, it doesn't mean anything. Jamarian Sharp not in there right now. Shot clock rolls down and one kicked. And a turnover and a timeout. In the Commonwealth, Hilltoppers. So at at and everyone gets our best deal. The tops. It's 61 points. 59 for Zappi. Joe Burrow had the old record of 60. He did that in 15 games. 
Zappi, 62 touchdown passes, 14 games. Now Louisville. That's Evan Faulkner spinning. He was fouled. McKnight. We we'll check in with Jenny Day. Yeah, I was talking in the huddle with Coach Stansberry, and he asked his players, he said, how many team fouls do we have? And they all said two. And he goes, how many do they have? And they all said seven. And he goes, all right, let's get to the free flow line, fellas. So expect them to be a little bit more aggressive in the paint, guys. Uh, that's a good call, and that is a decided advantage for Western Kentucky. They get to the line, they get a lot of points there. Yeah, you know, they outscore their opponents by four points a game from the free throw line. And yeah, they get there, there's no question, but the big thing about them is they don't foul. I mean, it's just amazing. They have four fouls in this whole game. So, I mean, you think about that at the end of the game, especially, you can be more aggressive and not worry about one-on-ones or two shots. I mean, that, that really helps. How much of that is the zone? Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot of it. There's no doubt. But even when they play man to man, this is historically, Stansberry's teams do not foul. Anderson came up short. Good rebound by Jalen Withers. That, that was a terrible pass because he threw it to the wrong guy. He threw it to a guy on the run that really is not comfortable catching the ball and handling it in that part of the floor. McKnight against Withers in the lane. I can see why Terrence Stans I mean, Rick Stansberry, like Terrence Stansberry, played for Temple years ago when I was an assistant coach. Rick Stansberry likes that guy. Good work, Withers. Even with sharp end, Withers, or excuse me, Roosevelt Wheeler got the loose ball and the putback. And this is a guy who doesn't play really hardly ever. He's playing only because of Malik Williams' absence. Williams out. COVID protocol. But the Kentucky is without Jalen Bucks, one of their best reserves. Sharks fouled. He'll go to the line. He's not great at the line. I mean, you're going to see McKnight here get by his man. This is just a really tough floater there. Six of 16. Tonight, 9 Eastern. Road to the Final Four continues on CBS Sports Network. Number 13, Auburn. On the road in St. Louis against Travis Ford's Billikens. The 24-hour home of CBS Sports. See, that's where the weight's going to help this kid. I mean, to only have taken 17 free throws on the season at his size doesn't make a lot of sense. Got to be able to catch it in the low post and get people to foul him. 12 points. Free throws. And the lead stretches back to seven. Corner three. McKnight at the West Miss. You know, this is one of those games if you're Louisville and you're Chris Mack, you say, can we just get the lead one time? You got to, just to try to put that kind of heat on Western Kentucky, they've been down the entire game. They got within two, and they can never get over the hump. Now it's back to seven. Hamilton, step back, three, drop shot. Louisville gets the basketball. Well, Louisville went from a paint team to a three-point shooting team today. 11 for 26. Parker's open. 11 for 27. Yeah, yeah, it's not a great possession. You know, get some kind of ball movements. They'll just come down against the zone and, you know, let a bomb go. Pick and roll. McKnight, oh, great catch. And finish. I mean, that is a hard catch. Don't get me wrong, that was kind of a bullet. It was in his chest area, but that was the thing was thrown hard. Nine assists for McKnight. Cross straight on. Anderson the rebound. Leads at nine. We're under nine minutes left. Keep him from going left. And he fouls him. 
It, it's tough to pry the ball from this guy. Well, take a look at the pick and roll. We're going to stop it right there. This already, you got to get over that. So this guy doesn't have to give that much help because when he rolls, you're dead. So you give too much help like that because the guard is not getting over the screen or going behind it, whatever the coach has told him he should do in this game. But one thing about Louisville, they have not defended. As good as they are defensively, they have struggled defending pick and rolls this year. Tamarion Sharp might be the best kept secret in college basketball, and today I think that secret is out. I, there's no doubt he's uh, the best kept secret. McKnight misses front end. You know, it's amazing how a team that's that good defensively normally is that weak against defending pick and roll. Locke, Faulkner, West in the backcourt for Louisville. Faulkner whips one. This is Locke. Step back. Three. No. Western Kentucky hasn't run a whole lot. Anderson almost fell. Sharp's calling for the ball. Yeah, I would throw it to him. He's got to post up strong, though, post up big. He's just kind of standing up right now. He's got to get low. McKnight, that was contested and tipped. Follow and a foul. Luke Frampton goes to the line. Rubles had some nice wins. In the Bahamas, Mississippi State and Maryland, they went to NC State and won. Their losses to Paul, who's good this year, on the road at Michigan State, and Furman. And Western Kentucky, you know, the start of the season, they had opportunities. They lost to Minnesota and South Carolina, and number 16, Memphis, all by double digits. But what they did to Ole Miss was sharp as the centerpiece. They are continuing that here today. And you know, Kermit Davis is one heck of a coach. There's no doubt what they did. I was I was surprised it was like that. 71-48, I believe. Lock. Cross driving. Lock. Deep three. Oh, too deep. There was more time on the clock. They had seven on the shot clock. And he launched that. You see the drought for Louisville. Justice had the big first half. Don't dream it too much in front of West. And a foul, a long way from the bucket. On Jay Lynn Withers. Well, it's been the Jamali Sharp Show. With that catch and finish. To the line is Western Kentucky. Such a unique story for Cameron Justice. And with more on that, let's go Jenny Doe. Jenny? Yeah, I hope to get that story in momentarily. But something to keep an eye on, going into that last huddle, Cam Justice was grabbing at his left wrist, shaking it out. So he was in some pain during the huddle, but obviously out there. Could be something to keep an eye on, though, obviously leading the team with points right now, guys. Yeah, you're right, Jenny. 23 now for Justice. And the lead is back to 12. 14 was the biggest lead. Louisville got within two. Ellis, Trogan. Bounce pass kicked away. And a foul on Western Kentucky. Isabel Wheeler with the reach. And Louisville was, I mean, uh, Western Kentucky was man to man on that possession. As you pointed out, not a lot of team fouls in this game for Western Kentucky. Just their fourth of this half. You're not getting any points at the free throw line against them. Cameron Justice the foul, his first person. Seven foot five, Jamari and Sharp in the middle of this zone. There's been such a weapon. Just off the screen. Runs into Sharp. That's where it ends. Frampton, Anderson, and free throws. Louisville just not sharp for long stretches. You know, they have a couple of minutes, and they just can't sustain anything. Two free throws coming. 
And now we go to Jenny for more on Cameron Justice. Yeah, you're talking about that story. Well, in February of 2020, Western Kentucky started looking at the process of getting an extra year of eligibility for Cam Justice because he missed a ton of time when playing at Vandy. Then COVID hit, so he got a real job in sales in Huntington, West Virginia. So he went to a Hilltoppers game at Marshall, talked to Coach Anderson, he wanted to get into coaching, and he became a grad assistant in academics. Now, a month later, Coach is putting together a little scrimmage with former players to give them some competition, and he dominated. So they then again started the process of getting him back on the team. He was cleared on November 10th, guys. But the only problem is he was getting married that weekend, so he had to wait until the 14th to actually play. <laughs> yeah, rehearsal dinner ran in the way of the game. <laughs> That's a, a lock jumper. When I was reading his bio, I saw his first year in college was 2015. I was like, I almost was coaching then. That's unbelievable. No, I wasn't. But 2015, this is 21-22. And it was Noah Stansbury, the coach's kid who's on the bench for the Hilltoppers, who tipped Dad off and said, hey, he's still got it, Dad. Yeah, well, he's, hey, coach's son, he knows what a guy who can play looks like. And there is... Kaylee Justice, 7160. He, yeah, he, he had to call Rick Stansbury and say, Coach, you know we got a game Friday night, but I'm getting a little pushback from the family that I'm going to miss the rehearsal dinner. The wedding was on Saturday. Had the wedding, had a, a very abbreviated honeymoon on a Saturday night, and then drove to Asheville for a game. And uh, got in the game, hit a three. Hey, look, look at this way. You're going to be married for 40, 50 years, hopefully. You're only going to play for four or five. So what the heck? Or six. Or six. <laughs> McKnight with a foul. 11 point lead for Russell. I, I might go home and he gets some pushback when I go home if my wife's listening. <laughs> McKnight, three personals. I think Louisville, they just have to play with a little bit more sense of urgency. They've had some, they play good defense and they have a couple of really bad possessions on offense. They really don't have anybody to throw the ball to inside, but you got to throw it to the foul line area against this zone. Because they don't have Malik Williams today. That's a difficult drive. Ellis sharp knocked it away. Difficult drive with that big man in there. Look at Anderson. Hit the finger roll. He had the second most dunks in Western Kentucky since 2010, 97. This guy can fly. Crowd coming to their feet. Lock. That's. Just. Not a great, now they got to come with the full court pressure. Got to do something to change this game around. Justice is fouled by Cross. If you're just joining us, we're in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And of course, the tornadoes that hit here a week ago, this was one of the hardest. Justice to the line. Rick Stansbury had a, a, a great quote after that trip out with his team. He said, people have lost so much money. He said, we don't have any problems. We play a game. A lot of the problems that players, coaches, the basketball bubble think they may have, those are not problems. Definitely not. If this, if this didn't put things in perspective, I don't know what will. Biggest lead. Ellis kicks. Lock. Sharps in the middle. Faulkner misses a three. 31 three-point attempts. You know, it's no secret, it's no mistake that. They are in the top ten in the country with three-pointers against them. You can't get anything in the lane against that zone. So you end up having to shoot a lot of threes. And that's what Louisville's been forced to do. And they don't shoot it well enough to just beat you from the three-point line. No. Justice took a look at the shot clock. And then threw it away. And I think that's what Rick Stansberry says is, okay, this is what we're going to play. You want to shoot 
60% of your shots from the three-point line. Go ahead, but guess what? You better make a whole bunch to beat us because you're not getting anything in that lane. <laughs> Coach on the floor is Justice. Coach on the bench is Stansbury. His shoe is broken. And he plays on. I wouldn't take him out either. But he set a tone early in this game in terms of coming out ready to go. You need the equipment room to mobilize here and get a new shoe for the next whistle. I mean, that shoe is flopping around. Ellis hits a three, and we'll see if Louisville has one more run left in him. Well, they do. It's now. McKnight. He can take a hit and keep on ticking. A foul on Sharp. Hilltoppers. Up big. 318 left. Defensively, they tried to pick up full last time down. Faulkner hits the free throw. Mason Faulkner started at Western Kentucky, then went to Western Carolina. And a graduate transfer at Louisville. He's had some nice moments in this game. Got 12 points. Full court pressure. McKnight has been brilliant. Justice got new shoes in that timeout, by the way. That's a difficult angle. Yeah, I mean, you want to use some clock, not take a shot like that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying you should hold the ball, but you got to get good shots. We're up by 12. 24 3. West gets a screen. Into the corner, cross. That's nice rebound by Wheeler. He didn't really make a clean catch there. Anderson lost it on the tip. West. You're right, Jared West is a really good defender. He had an exceptional career at Marshall. Cross goes to the line. 237 left. This is exactly what Western Kentucky doesn't want. They don't want the clock stop and Louisville putting points on the board with the clock stop. Matt Cross, he's just a sophomore. Excellent free throw shooter, and he misses the front end. Hamilton, was early in the shot. Clock. Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't take that one. Rick Stansbury is upset, and West makes him pay. That's yeah. a five-point turnaround there. That'll drive you nuts. As a coach, Weston has struggled. Weston turns the ball over 14 times a game. They're not a great ball handling team, and they're struggling with this pressure a little bit. You saw that note nine straight wins for Louisville. 2008 was the last time Western Kentucky beat Louisville, and, and this rivalry goes back a long time. McKnight in traffic. Good play there by Justice, coming to help. That was, he came from the other side of the floor, seeing McKnight was in trouble, came to help. Really smart play by Justice. Anderson against Locke. Oh, oh. Shot locks down. McKnight, it's a three. And it hits nothing. And so here comes Louisville now, down nine. With a minute 44 left. Well, at least you used the whole 30 seconds. They obviously don't want to shoot an air ball, but... I think another thing that a lot of people nationally don't know is that Western Kentucky is one of the winningest programs in college basketball history. history. Oh. Oh, that was a travel. I agree with the crowd. Wheeler a screen. West driving. Nice give. And Wheeler flushes. A quick two. Lead is seven. 
McKnight struggles. Strong man. I would try one more possession without fouling. One more. If they're down seven again, then they're going to have to foul. If they get the five, they may not have to foul again. And you don't want to foul certainly this late in the clock. No, now you don't want to foul. Anderson driving. And there's the foul. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Mason Faulkner. That's his second. CBS Sports did a list of the greatest college basketball programs of all time. I believe it was a couple years ago. Western Kentucky was 20th on that list in the country. Well, they had a guy named Jim McDaniel, who was one of the great players ever in the history of school. He's up there in the rafters somewhere, but uh, they played Villanova in that Final Four in 1971. It was Villanova, Western Kentucky, uh, UCLA, obviously, who won it. Uh, oh. Villanova, UCLA, Western Kentucky. I should, I should know, but I'm blank right now. But I know those are three. Louisville trying to hang in, ending that drought. And what a release it would be for this city, for this community, to win this ball game. They need to make a stop here. Lock, double team, falling away. That's a clutch bucket. And it's a six-point game with 46 seconds left. Lock has got 20. He got a foul. They can't leave 16 seconds to go down that much. I think they need to foul. Justice finds McKnight. I think they need to foul. Keep away. There's the foul. Ooh. That was close to a flagrant. I think he got the hand up a little higher than he wanted. 30 that, seconds left. That wasn't good clock management. You know what I mean? What? If you're going to foul with 15 seconds, as soon as it, if you want to get one trap. Bailey Zappi set the all-time NCAA record for touchdown throws in a season, 62. And you can just feel they're ready to take the roof right off of this. If Western Kentucky can hold this lead. Back to the line, Josh Anderson. Really nice performance today by Western Kentucky. And Anderson in particular, a double-double, 12 points, 10 rebounds, off the bench, off a very short bench. I mean, obviously Louisville playing without their best player didn't help Louisville no Williams, but their defense today was not up to the task. Justice! The wait is over. Nine straight losses to Louisville. 